If you do not know who Lil Durk is, first and foremost, I envy you. I really do. I, too, wish I lived in an alternate universe where these sorts of individuals did not exist. But unfortunately, I don't. I live where I live. I live in this world here where the amount of foolishness that we have allowed to perpetuate has gone to the point where we just accept the likes of Little Dirks to be running around our communities, doing what they do, and egging them on. And once they end up being caught for the things that they're doing and being incarcerated for it and are facing true consequences for it, we are, for some reason yelling to free these individuals from the very responsibility that should have been given to them a very long time ago. Now, I'm going to stop talking in hieroglyphics and get right to the point. Lil Dirk was arrested a few days ago. He was taken in by the feds. Now, if you don't know what the feds are, the feds are the federal government. Now, when the police come and get you, right, your local police, when they raid the house and they, and they come and collect you, that is um, oftentimes not going to mean much besides, you know, an arrest. Maybe it's a serious arrest. They have a warrant for your arrest. You might go to jail for six months, six years, right? When the feds come and get you, this basically means you're cooked. You're done. It's a wrap. When the federal government has a case on you, that they are now executing, which means they are now moving on. It means they have been collecting data for quite a while now. And they know a little more than a little bit of information about what the hell you've been doing in these streets. And when they come to collect, they have come to put you underneath the jail. So it's safe to say that Lil Dirk, who is one of the, uh, the godfathers or the founding fathers, excuse me, one of the founding fathers of what has come to be known as drill music has now been placed under federal investigation for a RICO charge. A RICO charge is a racketeering charge. The racketeering charge is essentially, uh, it, is a, um, it is a tool for convicting organized crime and those involved in it. So when you look at the likes of Diddy, Diddy is essentially under a RICO charge because there is organized crime. Now, his has been linked to the, um, the trafficking of human beings, right? Lil Durk has been connected to the deleting of human beings. Now, this may come as a surprise to some, but um, those some are obviously the ones who don't know who this individual is or those who listen to this individual's music with their heads so deep in the sand that they can't actually hear the words that are being said. This is a man whose music is literally red rum backwards music. Spe spell red rum backwards and you'll know exactly what I mean. He creates music about deleting human beings. That's what Little Dirk does for a living. That's what has made Little Dirk one of the most popular artists, Grammy winning artist, multiple platinum plaques, $50 million plus in the bank account. He makes music about what he is now convicted for and for some crazy re it's look it really still blows my mind even though I've thought about this a lot I have pondered and perplexed over this for a long time it still blows my mind there are people who will yell free Lil Dirk no matter what this man could have deleted your own grandmother and you're still going to yell, free Lil Dirk. This is the level of insanity that we have reached. This is the level of, of obsessiveness that we have reached within this celebrity worshiping cult that we call a society. We've gotten to a place where we would rather have an individual walking the streets, not even walking the streets, forget that propped up as a leader within our communities who is a canceller of human life, deleting human beings, making music on it, perpetuating this message, 
And then we want to elevate them up to where our babies can look at them as the voice of the streets. And I, I didn't just make that up. That's just not me just being creative. He literally calls himself the voice of the streets. What streets are those? Which boulevard are you the voice of? Obviously, a street by the name of foolishness and idiocracy, hypocrisy, dysfunction and trauma. Oh, the voice of uh, a trauma avenue meets dysfunction boulevard. That's the street that you must be the voice of. And you know, this isn't just a message about or to a to Lil Dirk. It's to all of us who have allowed for these sorts of individuals to get away with what they get away with. Now, rational, same human beings like the one who is continuing to listen to this and you're not triggered and your blood is not boiling because you're looking for ways to defend your God in, in Lil Dirk. For individuals like you, you are a part of the solution. And I'm thankful and I'm grateful for you. But it is time for you to start speaking out. It's time for you to stop holding back. When you hear foolishness, because it's not just a little dirks. People will defend these types of things happening in the community and, you know, and shame you. I know that being black, especially in a place like America, I have been told that I'm a part of the problem when I point out the fact that, oh, we are deleting each other in our communities. Why does nobody want to talk about that? Why does nobody want to talk about black lives being exterminated within our own communities. Why do we want to play the blame game? Why do we want to pretend it's not happening? It's only convenient when there's a certain narrative. You don't care if that's the only thing you care about. You don't care if that's the only time it matters. Oh, I really care about the kids, but you don't care about the kids when it's your people doing something to the kid. Come on, bro. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I can't go for that. I can't go for that. I don't free none of them. None of them need to be free. If they did it, did he or did he not? If they did it, they need to stay exactly where the consequences lay. They need to be underneath that prison. I'm serious. Look, I believe that you can change your life and that's a beautiful thing. I believe in second chances. I received the check second chance within my own life, going from addiction into finally cleaning myself up. Okay? I lost a lot of people. Lost three of my best friends to overdoses, straight up. But I understand that there are consequences to decisions. When you continue to make a certain decision or you make even one decision that's going to alter your life, you made a decision and you must live with the consequences of the decision. If you are in a beautiful relationship with a beautiful human being and you fumble the bag, you messed that situation up, you messed up. And that person leaves and they do not come back. D don't cry over at that person's crib. Don't hold over a boombox over your head. Don't hit them up in the DMs. You messed up, you messed up. They leave, they have enough self-respect to not be treated in that way. And you need to leave them alone. Straight up. You just need to, you need to leave them all the way alone. Period. And if they let you back in, that's foolish on their part. But again, that's still them. But you can't now play the victim because, oh, consequences have come. You make your decisions. These individuals knew what they were doing when they were doing it. Whether they were intoxicated, under whatever the influence of demonic spirits, whatever it may have been, they still did what they did. And so, therefore, they must reap the consequences of what they did, straight up. If they're innocent, get freedom. I'm all for it. I'm for real justice, which is if they're truly innocent, let them go. But if they did that, if they really, and again, some folks will, you know, there's people walking right now who have done, no, I'm talking about who I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about the likes of Lil Durk, the creators of a red rum culture, red rum backwards. Hopefully you've caught on to that one so far. Those who continue to perpetuate a culture of dysfunction, of trauma, of instability. Now, look, the story of this young man specifically is an interesting one because he's somebody who actually in the last, they say two years, I don't know because I don't listen to this field, but in the last two years, I guess they say he's been trying to, you know, push, pushing P, pushing positive, 
He had a song with J. Cole, and that's the only thing I remember. That's the one that got him the Grammy, I believe, all my life. When all the kids are singing on the hook, and you know, my brother J. Cole is spitting a positive verse, I think. Lil Durk is, is rapping one of the most positive things I've ever heard come from. And I was like, wow, this brother, okay, maybe he's changing, right? And then brother all of a sudden becomes a, a Muslim and, you know, and is speaking peace. His father comes out of prison and, you know, his father is reformed from his own crimes. And you see just a, a shift and a change. And all of a sudden you see him getting the keys to the city, right? Chicago then gave him the keys to the city. He is viewed in the same respect as, as a, you know, as a, an, an organizer, a city leader, somebody who is reforming the community, who is changing things for the good. And not two days go by. And this brother is being locked up and they are throwing away the key. Now, some would say that it's unfortunate that he was taken down at a time where he was trying to make a change for the better. He had changed his ways. But I would argue to say that this was a ploy. It was a means of manipulating the public as well as those who are going to be involved in his trial because he knew that his demons, his shadows, his skeletons were coming to light. Those crows were coming to roost, if, if that's even a saying. Maybe I just made that up, but now it's a thing. The, the crows are coming to roost. Or, or the chickens coming to roost. Or the eggs, I don't know. Somebody's coming to roost. Closet's been opened. Skeletons are falling all the way out. Bones all over the damn floor. It's too late now. You did what you did. You made your bed. You got to lay in it, right? You did what you did. And now you, now you need to buckle up and, and be about the same lifestyle that you were perpetuating continuously. And this is just a message to him. This is for everybody in the likeness of. And I want this to be a message that we as civilians who don't believe in defunding police, who don't believe in taking away resources from you know, um, the one group who can actually legally do the most in order for these types of individuals not to continue to, to populate. It's time for us to tell the truth. It's time for us to speak in power as opposed to being afraid of offending somebody and being canceled. What will they say? What will they think? Will my credibility, will my blackness be questioned? I don't give a damn what's questioned. The one thing that needs to be put under investigation is why anybody is defending this madness in the first place. And the only reason it continues is because we allow it to. When we don't say anything, we are now part of that problem. Just like everybody was around Diddy who said nothing. Just like everybody who saw the sus behavior but said nothing. Everybody who saw R. Kelly do what he do and, and excused it because he sings good though. It's not, like, this is the age of truth. Straight up. I'm announcing it as it is. This is the age of truth, right? As Brother Cat Williams said at the beginning of 2024, this is the age where we're no longer going to be afraid to say it how it is to anybody's face. Let them demons screech. Let them come out. But speak your truth with your whole damn chest. Whatever it is, when there is a, a culture of lifelessness that is being supported, a death culture, I'm going to call it what it is, When that is being elevated, the ones who stand for life and stand in light need to say something and need to do something. And so, don't free Lil Dirk. If he did it, which he says he did it in many of his records, and he says he did a much more than that. And people around him have been dropping like flies. A lot of people have lost their lives in very, very heinous ways, brutal ways. Names he has mentioned to even be involved with that he has mocked past their transition. Don't free Lil Dirk or any of the other demons that resemble that. Simple as that. Uh, I 
used to be afraid of the dark A place unknown like a heart in their heart I, I used to see my life in the bar Now the kids unchained, every shackle is lost Two steps in the moonlight Two steps in the daytime You just know when it feel right Got to feel in the times night Shades that I just threw on Through my lenses You just can't do no wrong I fell in love with myself again I fell in love with myself I fell in love with the sunshine I fell in love with the light I fell in love with the full moon